Welcome to our girls' relationships. On this channel, we discuss problems people face in their daily lives. Let's start with a video. My guy was transferred to the office. I was working from another city. This is how we met. I was in a senior position and couldn't get Frank to join him in the office. But I got the impression that he was pleasant, a hilarious person. We interacted a couple times during formal dinners, and this made me fall for him. I asked him his number directly one day, and that's how we started conversing. I'd already fell for him, and I may say that I was looking for a relationship, but I didn't make it obvious. I wanted to know what he thought about me initially. We started hanging out. I got even more impressed with him. This let us get to know one other better. Just a few weeks later, he asked me out on a date. I immediately answered yes, and our first date was the happiest day of my life. We'd been dating for two months. I believe I offered that he move in with me. We would keep a distance in the office. I craved to be around him. We moved in together. I must admit that we felt we were the best and the most compatible couple. In the world, he was a kind and caring man who would worry over the smallest things and it just made him cuter. We make each other feel special at all times and we'll do anything to make the other happy. My family consists of my mother and a younger sibling who lives in the same city. His parents lived in his hometown. He has met my family multiple times. My family loved him just as much as I did. His parents live far away. I never got the chance to see them. However, they knew that their son was dating. The girl was from his office. My lover had informed me that his parents were strict and protective, so it wouldn't be easy for me to impress them. I admitted to him that I had genuine affection for him, respected his family, regardless of who they were, my boyfriend proposed on my birthday, and how could I say no? I probably said yes and hugged them with all of my power. He informed me that he intended to marry me in two months. I informed him that I was completely ready. He had to see his parents and informed them about our upcoming wedding, so he left for his hometown over the weekend. When my boyfriend returned, he seemed worried and informed me that his family was not convinced at all. He claimed that his parents were furious because he had not involved them or spoke with them before proposing to me. I informed him that we may go and convince them. Perhaps they would like me if they got to know me. My boyfriend phoned his parents. I told them I wanted to see them, to which his mother answered, she had no desire to see me. He could do whatever suited him. My guy, yet again, went to see his parents and tried to get their okay, but they didn't even speak to him properly. He said that they were not being valued. Their son had been mesmerized because he had never made his own decisions. My boyfriend returned and told me that he didn't care what his parents desired. He was certain of his decision. He told me that we were getting married we never required his parents' approval. We started wedding preparations. However, my mom was alarmed and remarked that my in-laws could cause complications later in life. I told her I trusted my boyfriend, and if he was taking a stand, I should encourage him rather than doubt him. We got married, and the event was small, intimate one, and involved our close friends and my family. Only I was the happiest bride, and I bet my husband felt like the luckiest groom. We planned that we would announce our wedding to my husband's parents after we returned from our honeymoon. We left our honeymoon after one week. We had the finest time together. As we returned, my mother told us we had to proclaim our marriage to my husband's family as the delay would simply exacerbate the situation. My boyfriend phoned his parents. He told them that he had married a few weeks ago and couldn't wait to see them. They told him that. He had chosen another family over them. He could stay with their family. They would never accept him as their son. This concerned my spouse so greatly. His parents are still not responding to his calls. My in-laws responded to my husband's call a week later and still talked harshly. My husband informed them that he was now old enough to make decisions concerning his life and did not require their help or approval at all times. His parents warned him that if he continued to act like that, that they would desert him. They would never let him see them again. They told him that. They reacted by inviting us to their house. 
My husband was pleased that at least his parents were prepared to see us. I am not receiving a positive feeling from the situation. His folks were cursing me a few days ago. They even claimed I had hypnotized their son. And now they are welcoming us to their house. I asked my hubby, what if they planned anything against us? To which he responds that I was overthinking and creating problems in my imagination. Because I was psychologically fatigued, my mother also told me, they were just trying to make up with their son. They could not lose their only child. We reached my mother-in-law's house around the evening. They had organized a magnificent dinner. They received this enthusiastically and told me that I was gorgeous and they were happy to see me. I felt relieved that at least they accepted this as a pair. I was confident they would like me. Once they got to know me, I was also persuaded that they were simply being protective of their son. My mother-in-law began asking me about my family, and as I told her that I had a mother and a brother in my family, she asked if my father had died. I told her that my parents had parted years ago. She would not leave the issue, and went on to question why they separated. I informed her that my father had trust issues. She doubted my mother, so she chose to part ways. She plainly stated if my father had doubted her. I must have missed something because I ignored her comment. But she went on to say that. Women of such character damage families. I lost control and yelled at her. How could she claim that my husband attempted to calm me down? I informed him that I wanted a divorce straight now. We departed immediately, and now I'm at my apartment. I've secluded myself in my room since we returned, because I can't even put into words how hurt I feel. Right now, my spouse has called my mother to talk to me. She convinced me to unlock the door. You could believe I overreacted. But I know how my mother dealt with it, her unhealthy relationship with my father, and how mother worked hard to raise my brother and me. I couldn't stand to say anything against her. My mother told me that I was being hyper and should not be concerned about someone. Who doesn't even matter? She told me that it was my husband who was important, and he was already by my side when my mother left. My husband informed me that he felt humiliated and apologized for the way his mom talked about my mother. He told me I shouldn't have requested for divorce. Right there, while it injured him, he said that. I couldn't punish him for anything. His parents had done my spouse, also told me that he would not speak to his parents, until they apologized to me. A week later, my mother-in-law called my husband. She told him that she wanted to, I see him. My husband claimed he wasn't going to see her until she apologized to me. My mother-in-law lost her senses. I informed my spouse that he was the worst son. He disrespected his parents. They had devoted their entire life to his future. My spouse told her that. They still did not have the right to govern his life or offer him guidance. He went on to say that. If they have not apologized to me, they'd lose their son. My spouse hung up after that and did not respond to their calls and texts. After that, his mother started messaging him, informing him that he couldn't perceive reality. I was trying to pull him away from his family. I seized my husband's phone and called my mother-in-law. She instantly took up the call. I told her that if she didn't quit being a bitch, I'd show her who was better at it. She said nothing, but kept texting my spouse so he could see what kind of guy I was. A few days later, my father-in-law called my husband he apologized to him. I never wanted to make such a mess. But my mother-in-law was not prepared to receive me. At whatever cost, he informed my husband that he felt humiliated. My mother-in-law's comments, my mother, and hoped he could do something. At that point, my spouse informed him that he understood him. He had no issues with him. My father-in-law requested if he may see my spouse, and my husband promised him that he would visit. On a weekend, my spouse went to see his father, and everything was nice until my mother-in-law appeared. I told my hubby, said she would only accept me under one condition, and that was if I would never see my mother again. She was a characterless woman, could have a negative impact on our connection. This enraged my hubby. He cautioned her that if she continued to be mean, he would certainly cease seeing her. My spouse warned her that, if she didn't mind her own business, she would be left alone at NTA. Taking a stance for your mother and don't allow anyone degrade her at any cost 
is justified and was the best a daughter could do. I was shocked to see Opie didn't care about her marriage, only because someone insulted her mother. She portrayed a strong character and faced the issue boldly. Opie's spouse also played a significant influence. By standing by her side, NTA Opie's mother-in-law was on the next level. A whole who was not only infatuated with her son, who was similarly self-obsessed. She couldn't see any other woman. Her son's life, believing that she owned it, only because she had raised him. She was such a terrible woman. And Opie did well by dealing with her rudely. She couldn't understand the language of love and appreciate the following narrative. My husband is 37 and I 34. We've been together for four years and married for two. He has a deceased son from his previous relationship. And I have a son from my past marriage. He and my son are 16. We get along nicely, but they don't spend much time together. My husband mentioned that school after school activities and friends and schoolwork are the cause. But IMO, if he truly makes an effort to spend time with my son, then he will find time. My spouse visits his son's grave every week, spends a couple of hours there and keeps his phone turned off. Last week was his son's death anniversary. My son had a football game to attend. I informed my hubby it's the best opportunity to spend quality time with my son, and he claimed he already spoke with my son. He claimed he wanted to go with his friends instead. I told him I could still join them, but he stated that for one. He wants my son to spend time with his pals. Two, he had to visit his son's cemetery, since it was his anniversary. I figured because we had already celebrated it at home, then his visit would be unnecessary. He became irritated and stated that his visit was a necessity, especially that day. And dispute ensued between us. I ended up telling him that he actually should make an attempt to spend time with his stepson. He said that his son matters too, unless I lost a child. I don't understand why this made me upset, because it appeared like he was insinuating that I do not love my stepson, as my own and used it against me. In the argument, he disappeared and refused to return my calls. My son arrived home, and after I vented to him, he said I was in the wrong. I shouldn't be too hard on his stepfather, because he certainly has something going on. He stated that he believes I'm overreacting and being paranoid for nothing, and assured me his stepfather does give him his time and care. However, it does not mean they have to spend every moment together. I don't know, despite believing I was harsh on him. I just feel like he isn't putting a genuine attempt to spend more time with my son. My son only said the above, probably to get me off his back. However, I am not sure I need other perspectives on this topic. YTA, how can you be this harsh to your husband? Today is the anniversary of his son's death. FFS, let him have this. At the very least, he's grieving as a parent should. Your son appears more mature than you are. In this scenario, if your son feels ignored by his stepfather, he would have made you aware. Simply quit if you don't want to lose him. You desire your hubby, and son will spend more time together. But they both get along. They say they spend enough time together. If your son is older, you can rant to him. He's old enough to express his want to be among his buddies pressuring your husband to join him. When he wants to spend time with his pals are unjust to both of them. YTA do not try to push relationships. It will never work either. Do not say. You celebrated your husband's anniversary. Son's death and the week following the anniversary is perfect opportunity to spend quality time with your son. That doesn't sound right. Next story, I am a 20-year-old woman. My sister-in-law just asked me, Who's 35 to dye my hair back to its natural color? Because my niece is 14 years old. Has taken a love to my hair and wishes to color it. I have vivid blue hair and I love it. I have always been fascinated to the alternative style and never saw an issue with this until recently. My niece and I are close, possibly because I am an adult, a little closer to her age. She has taken an interest in how I dress. I suppose it's just her looking up at me while attempting to figure herself out, has drawn some inspiration from me, and I think this is really sweet. But unfortunately, 
Her mother seems to have a different opinion. My niece suddenly began to inquire, get some stripes in her hair, and I suppose the persistent struggle to convince her parents has annoyed her mother. My niece's color of choice is the same color of blue as me. This is why my sister-in-law is now targeting me. She one day messaged me and asked me to tone down my look because it was impacting her daughter, and she is worried. People will believe that she is a degenerate. Like many of the children in our generation. Now, obviously, if your son is older, you can rant to him. He's old enough to express his want to be among his buddies, pressuring your husband to join him. When he wants to spend time with his pals are unjust to both of them. YTA do not try to push relationships. It will never work either. Do not say. You celebrated your husband's anniversary. Son's death and the week following the anniversary is perfect opportunity to spend quality time with your son. That doesn't sound right. Next story, I am a 20-year-old woman. My sister-in-law just asked me, who's 35 to dye my hair back to its natural color? Because my niece is 14 years old. Has taken a love to my hair and wishes to color it. I have vivid blue hair and I love it. I have always been fascinated to the alternative style and never saw an issue with this until recently. My niece and I are close, possibly because I am an adult, a little closer to her age. She has taken an interest in how I dress. I suppose it's just her looking up at me, while attempting to figure herself out, has drawn some inspiration from me, and I think this is really sweet. But unfortunately, her mother seems to have a different opinion. My niece suddenly began to inquire, get some stripes in her hair, and I suppose the persistent struggle to convince her parents has annoyed her mother, my niece's color of choice is the same color of blue as me. This is why my sister-in-law is now targeting me. She one day messaged me and asked me to tone down my look because it was impacting her daughter and she is worried. People will believe that she is a degenerate. Like many of the children in our generation. Now, obviously, I considered this an insult because if having multicolored hair implies you're a degenerate that that is clearly what my sister-in-law thinks about me, I kindly informed her. I didn't feel comfortable changing my appearance, because she asked me to, and then try to make her understand why my niece might want to change, and that she is attempting to become her own person. Well, my sister-in-law, I was quite upset that I wasn't going to change. According to my hubby, she has always struggled with being told no, and began telling me that as a grown-up in her child's life. I should want the best for her child. I'm a terrible aunt and role model. If I allow people to judge her child because she wants to emulate her punkish-looking art. I felt quite offended since I love my niece. Blood or not. I'd like to think I'm a good role model. What I mean is, I try hard to be someone she can look up to, come to when she needs aid. However, allegedly my blue hair makes me a lousy aunt, I told my sister-in-law that it was not my responsibility to be a role model and simply be a caring support system. Instead of assaulting me, she should discuss with her daughter about what she actually wants. My sister-in-law became further angrier and yelled my niece would not be permitted to come around as frequently. Until I quit dressing as a degenerate, I'm heartbroken since my niece can't come over as often now. But I do not want to change who I am. My hubby supports me, but my mother-in-law accuses me of being a whole. N-T-A, oh yes. Nothing entices an adolescent girl to comply like absolutely refusing to indulge. Even the smallest sign of personality. Continue doing your operation. I have a sense there is more to her staring at you as an adult in her life than just the smaller age gap. N-T-A, even if you change your hair color. I bet there are children at school, something your niece sees every day, who have unusual hair colors. These days, everyone seemed to be coloring their hair. I think non-natural colors look wonderful. I know a 70-plus-year-old woman who has purple and blue streaks in her hair. She also lectures at church on Sundays. Hair color is less permanent than piercings. Your sister-in-law is just acting goofy if she believes that dyeing your hair will change anything. I am a 25-year-old man. I've been married for two years now. To my childhood lover, 24. She has always wanted children, but I've never been particularly thrilled about the idea. 
understanding the current situation. This has been going on in my family. She has no knowledge about this, though. This is what led her to make a really naive error. On my 25th birthday. My wife had always been a very maternal person. Her maternal instincts shone through whenever she would attend to the children. Among our extended family interact with her own students. She is a kindergarten teacher. She is the kind of person who innately understands how to interact with children, how to get them to listen to her follow what she's saying. This is a gift that the majority of our family envy her for and sincerely admires her. Her biggest desire has always been to have our own child, something I wish I could give her. However, there is a, a terrible scenario is going on in my family. Because of this perfect now is not the perfect moment to consider kids. I always make sure she is taking her pills. To decrease the risk of unintended pregnancy. On my 25th birthday, my wife and I had invited all of our relatives for a massive celebration, claiming she has a surprise for everyone. Most of our relatives who were invited came. It was altogether a pretty entertaining affair. At the end of the celebration, everything began to go south. She declared that she had really special news. For everyone, she revealed that she had been pregnant for one month. I was waiting for the ideal occasion to disclose it. She was taking her medicine the whole time, but somehow the medications failed and she became pregnant. My sister stood up at once, claims that she had not expected us to be so insensitive, frankly hurtful to her. My wife was quite perplexed. Because she hadn't been informed, I didn't want her to get pregnant yet. My sister had no idea about this, so she told us to never contact her again. My folks were furious with us and informed us that they intended to enjoy today. Not be embarrassed. My wife was becoming angry by now. I couldn't understand why everyone was blaming her for becoming pregnant and publicizing it. The party concluded on a rather negative note. Everyone left in a sour attitude. We were advised never to contact my sister or her spouse ever again. My parents warned us to make amends. Otherwise, we would never see them again. My wife was frustrated by this time and began shouting at me, asking me where she went wrong. She had expected that as any other family. Alice would be pleased with the news of her pregnancy. She recognized by now that I was hiding something. She didn't like it. I promised to talk with her about it later. I told my wife about the troublesome issue. This has been going on in my family. I told her why my sister was upset. My wife's pregnancy was announced on my birthday. My sister has always wanted to be a mommy as well. However, fate was not very kind to her. She recently became pregnant, which made everyone thrilled. We had chosen to tell our wider family, including my wife after a few months, however. Things did not work out nicely. Several months later, the doctor informed us that the baby will be stillborn. Since there were issues with the pregnancy, my sister would never be able to become pregnant again. She was crushed initially by losing her child, and then at the idea of never having a kid again. Of course, adoption is a possibility. However, she genuinely desired a biological child. This occurrence had occurred only a month before my birthday. My sister has become a shadow of that person. She used to cease going out, reply to texts or calls, and even talk to me. She would just weep or stand normally throughout the day. She would inform her husband, her child. She realized she was going to be a lousy mother, so her child chose not to be born to her. It took her weeks of therapy to get back to even a semblance of her former self. Coming to my birthday party was intended to be a type of distraction for her. Nothing that reminded her of her own loss. My wife was speechless. After I told her everything she felt, I am terribly sorry for triggering my sister in this way. They had always been the best of friends. She criticized me for not telling her about it sooner, because if she did otherwise, we would not be in this situation. She would have understood not to discuss her pregnancy. In front of my sister, I would have even tried to assist my sister through this difficult scenario. Honestly, I understand my wife's argument. However, since this had become a sad circumstance, I didn't want to notify my wife before my sister did. I wanted her to be the one to share her own news. I thought I would betray her a little. 
by informing my wife she wasn't meant to know in the first place. My wife disagreed with my reasoning. She told me that she was technically member of the close family, since she was my wife, by excluding her. I claimed that she was not a member of the family. This led to a large disagreement between the two of us. She took some time off to catch some air, so that we don't say anything regrettable. I still don't understand how any of this could be my responsibility. My wife came home and demanded to talk with my sister. I told her it wasn't a great idea. She took offense with my wife. But she insisted, so I informed her. Go ahead. She contacted my sister to apologize. My sister picked up the phone after several attempts. She was told off for pestering her. She chastised my wife for creating a terrible scenario, for her to know that she had recently been through a horrible adventure. She had not expected this from my wife. She could comprehend my wife, not showing support for her, throughout the entire scenario. However, she had anticipated her to be more sensitive. She was proud of my wife, was going to conceive, but she wasn't prepared to forget all the hurt and loss. Bubbling inside her, my wife calmed her, in a way that she had always been capable of. She apologized to my sister, telling her honestly about what she had. I have no notion that my sister I was going through so much anguish. She told my sister, honestly. I had never informed her that this was the current circumstance that they were faced. Had she known my sister was going through so much trauma, she would have raced to be by her side. She would have even remained with her. Until things improved, she regretted, without knowing that my sister was in so much pain, and she felt sorry for the situation she had created, unwittingly on my birthday. My sister was startled to hear about my wife, had no notion of the overall situation. She expected me to at least tell her the brief details of what happened. Given that everyone else in the household already knew now, my sister quit criticizing my wife, but she blamed me instead. Both of them held the opinion that all misunderstandings could have been prevented. If I had simply been open with my wife, I informed them both honestly. I had no idea whether notifying her about this would be appropriate or not. My sister immediately chastised me, tell me that if everyone else knew that not telling my wife was simply disrespectful to her. As a family member, my wife agreed and expressed that she felt upset. I didn't tell her anything about this and she found out after messing up. I acknowledged their comments and agreed that perhaps I should have been the one who told my wife to prevent all of these confusions. I was just glad my wife and sister had made up and realized that it was a simple misunderstanding. Both of them are still angry with me, but I am confident they will forgive me after I make amends. Now, the main issue is, I'm trying to convince my folks that my wife had made a genuine error I did not aim to upset anyone. I hope everything goes well. My wife called my mother today to apologize to her. My mother was really cold to her. First, I asked if my sister had forgiven her yet. She responded in the affirmative. My mother finally consented to listen to my wife. She informed my mother that it was a misunderstanding and she had never been notified. My sister had lost her baby. Had she known she would have supported my sister throughout, she has always been my sister's best friend, so why would she want to damage her feelings now? She was even sorry for getting pregnant, in the current situation when my sister could actually be thrilled for her. She apologized to my mother, honestly, stating she never meant to degrade. In any way, she was almost in tears by this point. My mother was genuinely surprised. To know that I had, I did not tell my wife about my sister's stillbirth. She gave me an earful about how these kind of items should always be shared with your wife. She is also a member of the family. She was upset with me for not saying anything to my wife. She, I informed my wife that she had nothing to apologize for. She was really delighted about her pregnancy and the idea of a grandchild. The scenario was not ideal, but we can make the best of it. She was excited about her pregnancy. She even apologized to my wife for getting angry without realizing she didn't mean to injure anyone. Honestly, at this moment, I'm simply pleased everyone made up. They're still angry with me, and I understand why. However, 
It took courage for my sister. Accept my wife's pregnancy. I respect her for doing it so joyfully. I feel for the wife. She had no understanding why everyone was so angry with her. She was simply pleased about her pregnancy. I wanted to share the news with everyone. Opie should practice being more open, alongside his wife, because that appears to be a strange idea to him. I hope a lesson was learned from this tragedy. Opie. Honestly, this seems like a series of misunderstandings, rather than anyone's fault. I'm glad everyone got to know the truth. In the end, I feel for Opie's sister. Imagine losing your child, and then seeing your brother and best friend enjoying parenthood. I'm the oldest of five, and I'm 19, and my two sisters, ages 14 and 7. I have lately begun a new job. Finally, I have some money to spend on myself. I experience low blood sugar on occasion, or I'm really hungry and thirsty at night. So roughly a month ago, I purchased a small cart to store in the corner of my room and filled it with goodies. Some drinks and other necessary essentials lotion, extra chapstick because I keep losing mine, etc. My siblings are absolute vultures when it comes to eating. Whenever they have a snack that they enjoy, they'll devour it back to back, like chain smoking until it is gone then blame each other when there is no more. Another reason why my snack cart is in my room. I had just refilled my automobile. I was noticing stuff evaporate from it. I knew what I needed. Since it usually takes a while for me to make a dent in my stash, I approached my siblings. My two brothers admitted and apologized. My sisters claimed innocence. I let it go, but snacks kept coming up missing. I peeked in my sister's room, found wrappers and bottles under their beds. I was annoyed and wanted to catch them in the act. So the next day, I faked to depart for work, sneaked through the back entrance. I waited in my closet to catch them. It took a while and I nearly gave up. I heard my door open. I heard the older sister. Guiding the younger sister on what foods to carry, I came out of my closet after catching them in the act. And frankly, I was pissed. I yelled a little and kicked them out. They tried to come back into the room and argue with me, and refused to go. I used one of my huge stuffed animals to block them, back outside the door. My tiny sister became quite upset and wailed, while my older sister felt I was being an ass over it. My mother ended up giving me crap about it, saying that I needed to bring my snacks downstairs, because anything food-related, whatever you bring into this house should be shared, which I find hypocritical. She keeps her favorite goodies in her room, when my siblings cannot find it. I feel awful for becoming furious about something so insignificant and childish. I am the oldest and should be setting examples. Yet here I am upset over snacks. Aida yelled and kicked them out. With BTA, if I blocked them from my room, I lock the door whenever I leave the house. For everyone who mentioned it, diabetes is quite frequent in my family. My brother is type 1 and my father is type 2. I began suffering with low blood glucose. Shortly before my doctor told me I was at high risk for diabetes. As well, I attempt to keep healthy snacks or foods heavy in sugar, protein. When I need it too, I pay a reasonable rent. I am still attempting to finish school. I cannot afford to live on my own. I have a lock on my door. But my siblings had seized the copy I gave to my mother in case of crises. I'm going to replace the lock again. Have a serious conversation with them later. Tell your mother you'll share as soon as she does. NTA is hypocritical. NTA. However, by the time it came to catching them, you should already have a lock set up. Purchase a lockable unit to store your munchies and save enough to move out. If they are yours and you have paid for them, your parents are being stupid to indicate that you need to spread them around, especially if they claim it does not apply to them. My sister is 45, is getting married this summer, for the sake of complete transparency, I am thinking not attending because we had an argument. This led to practically no contact, with the exception of seeing her once, and then her coming out to me about the subject of his post. Several years ago, I do not anticipate anything to change. Despite not being close, she reached out. She invited our oldest daughter to be in her wedding. As a junior bridesmaid, become an older flower girl. We have five children, and only the oldest is a female. Her bond with my children, especially my two girls, is part of why we fought in the first place. 
she was all about how cute. The oldest is quite lovely and adorable, and just generally fond all over her while never ever giving that type of care to my younger daughter. Or my boys, I asked her to stop. I reminded her that other children could hear, and so could my oldest. I didn't want her to place all of her value. My sister refused to stop, despite her appearance, my final straw, and what led to our fight was my youngest. I simply asked her if she looked as nice. My sister ignored her completely and kept emphasizing how beautiful my oldest was. I took her aside and informed her. She was not being kind with all of her comments. She argued back. Because my oldest is the one that is admired for her beauty. Her entire life, and we must learn to accept that. I told her that she had used her final chance. Leave my family alone until she realizes she is mistaken. This is why I'm not sure I'll go, but her asked my oldest to be in the wedding, set off alarms that she'll pull the same nonsense and might possibly go further overboard because she will get to choose how she dresses. What would her hair look like? I said no without thinking it. It just feels disgusting to me given the situation. My sister is angry and my parents think it's wrong. To deny my oldest an option, I never asked her whether she wanted to. My sister said that her wedding day will be beautiful. With my daughter present, and I'm spoiling it, punishing her for trivial reasons. Aida NTA. I honestly struggle to understand. Why would you ever contemplate going or letting your oldest go? Of course I understand why. Toxic families can wrap reality in a variety of wacky ways. But from the outside, it seemed like a clear-cut run for the Hill situation. This behavior would be so simple for your sister to not do if she had even the smallest bit of regard for you. And your children, it can definitely mess up your kids, including your oldest, to be treated this way. And your gut hunch is correct, NTA. Your sister has even stated she worries exclusively about the oldest. I worry about her own children if whenever she has them I would vote against going to the wedding at all. Send a gift and take all of your lovely youngsters to something fun. It could appear petty for some people. However, your child's happiness comes first, her special day.